Hey folks, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I use my side scan in conjunction with my point one antenna to locate and mark crappy so that you can catch slabs just like this. Hang on and stay tuned for a little thump therapy. Fishing with squirrel. And that's it right there, folks. That's what's down there. That's what you see on the graph. So just trust the graph. Had somebody ask, you know, what I, uh, how do I know they're, they're crappie, um, not bait fish. And at one time I actually, I thought they were seeing the size dots and depth of water matters. The deeper the water, the more it'll trick you. But I actually threw out, I thought I was seeing a school of bait fish and I threw a cast net and I came up with a whole net of crappie. Of course I had to throw them back, but, um. But best way is to fish for them. Can't get them to bite, throw a cast net. But that's it, right there. It's a real hard, windy day. And I'm having to keep turning you because the boat, literally, it just keeps turning. Like now I'm going back the other way. It makes it real hard. And without the point one antenna, I would lose, because I can't pick, once I shift around, I can't pick to lose my bank spot to precision cast on these fish so i have to go back and see so before i was casting off this side of the boat now i'm casting off starboard side of the boat there's another one fish a little bit smaller one but good eating size they got to be at least eight inches and that one definitely hits fits the bill but that's it folks depends on there we go again and on again and we are suns in the sky these fish aren't supposed to be biting like this but but they're on and here we go again that's a good one that's a real good one 15 incher so if you're wondering what i'm using quarter ounce jig and a bobby garland it's just a white swim tail Now, me and Cookie went last night, did that night fishing trip. Actually, two nights ago, getting my days mixed up. And we, um, they wouldn't hit a, they wouldn't hit that bait for nothing. I threw chartreuse. I threw a green shad color. Nothing. Not the first would not hit it like, well maybe it's just they're not feeding right now it's just the wrong time of the day they're there can you get them to bite he thumped it and i missed it okay so those fish right now about three o'clock about 2 30 actually so um and that's coming off my point one antenna right here. There they are. Got another one. So again, folks, especially today with the wind blowing like it's blowing, being able to pinpoint these fish without some sort of active target or something. Um, if you if you don't have active target, you need to invest in point one. I say you need to I mean you can you can fish without it I did for a long time but it'd be really frustrating on a day like today but good old thump therapy there's that little jig there we go again and it's on I don't know if you saw that or not just letting it fall down in that track zone bringing them in There we go. There's another one. That's what's down there. There we go. Got another one on. So folks, that one right there is 10. 
and they gotta be eight to keep them. That's the perfect eating size right there. That's number eight. And I keep adjusting this camera because my boat keeps going in this wind. One thing remains the same. Fish are there and they're biting. There we go. Another one on. There we go again. That would be number nine. I'm gonna get half a limit. And then I'm gonna show y'all exactly what they look like. And that's 10, that's half a limit. I could sit here and limit out. I could probably catch 30 or 40 of these things, but 10 is enough. You don't have to have active target or live scope. I'm sure it would be really nice to have, not saying that I won't ever get it, but you don't have to have it to catch fish. And that folks, that's it. That's number 10. I'll show you what we're throwing on. As first, I'm gonna show you, I've got my two screens set up. I got my waypoints on them right here. We're gonna go back by, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to set those waypoints and the reason that I set three. And right here is um, my HDS-12. And on this screen, we're gonna focus in, I'm gonna show you exactly what those crappie look like. So let's make a run by them, shall we? And I'm. I'm using my trolling motor and we're going 1.6 miles an hour, but it'll be enough speed so that you can kind of see exactly what I've done here. Or you can see the fish. Now here we go. Now we're on the fish. You can see them picking up on the side scan. That's, that's all crappie. Um, they're a little faint on the down scan because they're more over the side of the boat they're 25 feet over so there's some overlap between down scan and and side scan but um i'll go ahead and make another pass and come back the other way okay so you'll get a good look a good view going this way you can see on 2d there's some bait fish well i say there's bait fish so that, that's definitely a fish right there it could be the bubbles and the turbulence. No, not that far down. That's bait fish. But as we go, we're going to come right by them. There's going to be, again, I'm, I'm kind of cruising kind of close to them. You'll see them on, on side scan and down scan right here. So there's brush. There's the crappie, old school of them, setting off the edge of that brush. There's a brush, there's a crappie. It's a crappie on the down scan, and there's quite a few. You can see there, probably a hundred or so. I could have limited right here easily. But that's it. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. But this time I'm gonna pass and show you what they look like when I'm further away. I'm going to be 80, still going to keep my range at 80 feet. And again, this is my water column. This is my transducer, center of the boat. And this is what I'm looking at as I'm going. I'm trying to pick those, those crappie up. So they're harder to see right here. That's the crappie right here. You can see shadows if you look. It's hard to see because of you've got the ground that you're picking up on top of it. When it's in the water column, they stand out a whole lot easier. And that's them, but you can see the shadows and the fish. So that's kind of why it's important to get to get within clo close enough so you can see them. Because you could easily pass that and not even realize that that was fish. And then here I go, I'm picking up boat docks and stuff. But I'm going to swing right around. 
and you can see how small these are over here now that's going to be just a probably a school of bait fish the size of the dots compared to the the crappie so i'm going to make one more pass on these fish but i'm going to pass closer using nothing but side scan this is boat dot this is my transducer this is turbulence coming off my trolling motor that little if you're wondering what that little line is right here my transducer i'm in a pontoon boat so it that transducer is underneath my left tune there's the brush and the crappie were just beyond it and there they are and see how they stand out because they're in the water column now they're still 20 feet off my boat they're not under me they're off to the side well they're they're from about 15 feet to about 25 feet but you can see the shadows that are over here on the ground uh, cast a little bit but those are those fish are low in the water column i had to let that jig drop so that's how uh, that's what i was fishing that, that that's what they look like so what i did to mark these fish is you can see three waypoints set and i just went around that school of crappie i went to the where i first saw them how far how close they were to the bank i could have put a fourth a lot of times i do and then I've got a bigger area to throw to. So I marked each side of the school of those crappie. So that's that's exactly what I did in order to, you see the three waypoints, they are 77, 78, and then 81. I've got a couple of waypoints back over here where I marked some brush. There was a few fish on it, but not much. And I have my heading direction point turned on that's the blue line that you see coming off of my cursor that way i know my boat is faced in this direction you can see the triangle and then the blue line just makes it a little easier for me to spot that triangle back from a distance and now i know that if i'm going to fish for these fish right now i'm going to be casting back over to about what seven o'clock uh 7 30 something like that uh, off the uh, port side of my boat and it's really playing the wind. I mean, when I spot lock, if I were to double anchor, I could turn my boat however I wanted to. But when I pull up to a spot and I just want to cast on it and see if there's fish and if they're biting, then that's what I do. That's how I approach it. If you got value out of this video, then please hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really helped me out. I appreciate it. We'll catch you on the water fishing with squirrel.